In 2004, Guillermo del Toro blessed us with the first Hellboy film, starring Ron Perlman as the horned do-gooder. The movie did pretty well, both at the box office and with the critics. So naturally, a sequel was on the cards. Hellboy 2 The Golden Army dropped in 2008 and knocked it out of the park, doubling its budget in box office receipts. But that seemed to be the end of the chapter. In 2019, we got a reboot, simply titled Hellboy. No original writer, no Ron Perlman, and unfortunately, it faced some stiff competition at the box office. To put it bluntly, it tanked, with Rotten Tomatoes scores and box office earnings that make anyone wince. But fear not, because Brian Taylor, the brains behind the Crank franchise, is steering the ship for a new Hellboy adventure. Hellboy the Crooked Man. The folks at Millennium Media, who've held the Dark Horse comic rights since 2018, are putting their weight behind this project. They're known for hits like The Hitman's Bodyguard and The Expendables. Oh, and the big guy himself, Mike Mignola, is keeping a close eye on things to make sure it stays true to the source material. In this video, we'll explore the original comic and explore the Crooked Man from the Hellboy universe. So without further ado, let's begin, shall we? Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you, let's begin. The Curious Case of Cora Fisher In the year 1958, Hellboy finds himself in the Appalachian Mountain of Virginia. He was attending to a girl who had been bewitched by someone. The girl was in a petrified state and hadn't moved a muscle for quite some time now. However, she was breathing fine. The local woman who had found her tells Hellboy that the petrified girl was seen fighting with another woman named Cora Fisher, who was notorious in the community for being a witch. Then, a man named Tom Farrell entered the house where the cursed girl had been kept. For reasons that I will delve into in a bit, everyone present was surprised to see Tom. He had been gone 20 years and returned to his hometown to get embroiled into this strange situation. Tom found something called a witch ball, as the name suggests, witches use this spiky, urchin-like ball to curse whoever witches struck with it. Of course, witch balls were imbued with all sorts of dark magic and curses. Furthermore, removing such curses required a long and tedious process. First, you had to burn the ball and then recite the witch's name while you boiled the victim's clothes. Tom Farrell instructed the locals to remove the curse from the girl, after which Tom and Hellboy set out to find Cora Fisher. However, Tom wanted to visit his mother before doing that, but unbeknownst to him, Tom's mother had been dead for a long time now. Adding to Tom's misery, he learned that even his father had suddenly gone missing, and the locals believed that he had drank himself to death in the woods. With no family left, Tom resorted to taking Hellboy to Cora's abode. Turns out that Tom already knew about Hellboy, which is why he wasn't surprised to see him. So Hellboy had arrived on Earth back in 1944, and a three-year-old Hellboy's picture had appeared in a magazine in the year 1948. Tom knew who Hellboy was, his adventures with vampires and other such monsters. Tom had been away for two decades and finally decided that it was time for him to come back home, which made him curious about where Hellboy belonged to. Hellboy tells him that some people found him in a church in England in 1944. Tom is relieved to hear that Hellboy was found in a church because, according to him, the devil couldn't enter the church. When Hellboy tries to tell Tom that he's not the devil, Tom interrupts him to tell him that he already knew because Tom had seen the devil earlier in his life, and Hellboy is nothing like it. So what was Tom talking about? Did he really see the devil? Tom's Lucky Bone it wasn't before long that the two of them reached their destination. Tom announced his arrival, but she was nowhere to be found. The two of them talk about Cora, how Tom knew her as a child, how she didn't seem evil when they were younger, etc. Tom found more witch balls by the fireplace. Furthermore, they find a Bible that had been scratched out by someone with a cross, and underneath it was Cora's name. Tom then heard a strange voice coming from a bottle. Turns out it had the strange, large bug that seemed to be Cora's demon familiar. The bug goes on to warn Tom that someone knew that Tom was back in town and that this someone was waiting for him. Upon investigating further, Hellboy comes across an empty human skin. The two of them decide to wait for Cora to return for her skin. The two of them once again get to talking. Hellboy asks Tom how it was that he managed to see the devil himself. Tom begins to tell his story. He was only about 15 years of age when he met a young and beautiful girl named Effie Kolb. 
He knew right off the bat that she meant nothing but trouble, but he was also a young boy in his late teens and probably thought more from what was underneath his pants than what was inside his head. Effie was a witch, and she taught him a few things about witchcraft. She convinced him to think that even though he could become a witch or, well, a wizard, he got enamored by the prospect of having power over others. So one day he found a dead black cat and boiled it to the carcass turned to nothing but bones. He took the pot down to the creek and washed the flesh out of the bones. While he did that, he recited the following. In the name of Beelzebub, succubus, and the archangel, a hell, I pledge to be loyal to the devil the rest of my born days, to never pray to God again. Effie told her that whatever bone he was holding when the devil showed up would become his lucky bone. So the 15-year-old kid was, of course, expecting the devil to look devilish, something like Hellboy. But instead, he got something else entirely. The entity that appeared before Tom was Jeremiah Whitkins, whom the old folks called the Crooked Man, a creature from folktales. According to these folktales, he used to have a big house in the place called the Hurricane in the Appalachian Mountains. He was one of the first white settlers to come there. However, Wiccans soon started brewing trouble between the Indians and the whites. He would supply both alcohol and weapons to both sides, creating trouble and making money out of it. But that didn't last for too long as he was finally charged for his crimes and hanged. But since he was so vile and wicked, the devil didn't want him to be wasted away in hell. So he was sent back as a minion of the devil to collect souls. And as far as Tom, he got so petrified looking at Wiccans that he ran. Going all Forrest Gump, Tom ran and ran until he found himself serving the army, which sent him to the Pacific to fight. Interestingly, Tom didn't let go of his lucky bone, which he believed kept him safe for all those years and even during the war. Lost and Found The two of them were still talking when Hellboy heard a noise. At first, it seemed like a raccoon had entered the room where Cora's empty skin was. However, it soon became clear that this was no usual raccoon, as it crawled into Cora's skin and turned into Cora. She was shocked to see Tom there. Tom was shocked to see what had become of Cora. She used to be a fine girl, and the last he heard, she was about to get married to a man named Nate Sothby. She tells him that she did, in fact, marry Nate, but he died, and all their babies died as well. The grief was so overwhelming that she took up with some of the women from the top of the mountain, and that's how she became a witch. But as Cora narrated her sad ordeal, they heard another voice coming from outside. As the three of them went out, Tom was shocked and rather horrified to see Effie. Effie asked Cora to come along with her because the crooked man was waiting to speak to her. Tom intervened and asked Effie to leave Cora alone. To this, Effie tells Tom that he was waiting for him as well. When Hellboy asked if the crooked man was waiting for him, Effie went a bit defensive and flew away, leaving her frail horse behind. Before leaving, Effie tells Tom that she'd brought him a gift. Yes, the horse. And also that she'd been riding him hard for all those years. Just as Tom removed the belts from the poor beast, it vanished, but a thump was heard. Looking down, Tom found his father. It turns out that Effie had shapeshifted Tom's father into a horse and had been riding on him ever since. Tom's father passed away in his arms. Tom wanted his father buried on church grounds, but that was up on the hurricane, where the crooked man was waiting for him. Cora warned him of the consequences of such an action, but Tom wouldn't budge. Of course, Hellboy wouldn't miss it for the world and offered to join Tom in his quest, but he also wanted Cora to tag along. Cora's fate. So the three of them began their journey. Tom was carrying his father on his back. Hellboy offered to carry the old man's corpse, but Tom refused, claiming that it was the burden of his penance and that it was his duty to carry his father. It was his punishment for the foolishness of his youth, and it had to be he who carried the weight. Nevertheless, they continue walking until they reach the coal mines. Cora says that she cannot go any further. When asked by Hellboy what was wrong, Cora says that it was filled with the Melungian witches, the descendants of the original settlers from Roanoke. Melungians descended from the settlers who disappeared at Roanoke Island and got mixed with the Croatian Indians. And these Melungian witches had all sorts of stories about them. Back in 1902, there had been a cave at the mine in which over a hundred men got trapped inside. For more than 24 hours, the Melungian witches flew across the sky and swooped down into the cave, possibly to devour the trapped men. There was some screaming for a while, but then nothing. Everything went silent. 
But it seemed that the witches chose to stay underground, or because of some mysterious reason, they never managed to come back up. Suddenly, the day turned dark, as if night came a few hours too early. It turns out that the witches knew who Cora was, and they called out her name. As the witches continued to call out Cora's name, she convulsed and burst into a giant mass of frogs, snakes, and all kinds of insects. It was pretty messy and gross, to be honest, and straight out repulsive. But then again, what else can one expect from a Hellboy comic, right? Within no time, the creatures warm all over Hellboy. Desperate times call for desperate measures. So Tom used his lucky bone to get himself Hellboy and his father's corpse out of there. But as they got out of there, Tom and Hellboy were confronted by Effie, who told Tom that because he finally made use of the lucky bone, the crooked man finally had control over him. Hellboy used his awesome weapon called Good Samaritan on Effie, but it seemed that she managed to escape. Oh, and by the way, we have done an entire video dedicated to exploring the weapons Hellboy uses, including the Good Samaritan. You may want to check that out. Now with Effie gone, the two of them resume their journey and reach the church. The Crooked Man shows up. Once inside, Tom called out for the Reverend, who seemed to know that Tom was arriving. When asked by Tom how it was that the Reverend knew about his arrival, he pointed Tom towards Cora, who had mysteriously arrived at the church a couple minutes before Tom and Hellboy. This was curious to everyone because she was a witch and witches couldn't enter churches, but maybe Cora could do that because she wasn't inherently evil. However, it wasn't really Cora, but only her ghost, which was more strange, to be honest. Hellboy consoles Tom by telling him that although Tom could not save Cora's life back at the mines, he must have done something special. She wouldn't be at the church otherwise. It seemed that the devil got Cora's body, but her innocent soul was beyond the devil's reach. Outside, a lot of witches were gathering. The Reverend explains that witches have always swarmed the place. But back in the day, there would be regular folks as well. But now, they are all gone. The witches come to the church on most nights, but since it's consecrated ground, they cannot really touch or enter the premises. Meanwhile, Tom begins to self-criticize, saying how he brought it upon himself. But the Reverend reassures him that Tom managed to straighten himself out. Effie showed up again, and this time around, Hellboy wanted to end the witch's life once and for all. But just as he was about to confront Effie and the other witches, the Crooked Man showed up. The Crooked Man, with his crooked face and crooked teeth, had come to collect something. The Deal The Crooked Man reminds Tom of the deal they had made all those years ago, albeit it was a one-sided deal. The Crooked Man tells Tom, you and me had a deal. You wanted that witch's power and you've had it all these years. Sure, you hardly ever use it, at least not any way I'd like, but you still gotta pay for it. The Reverend speaks directly to the Crooked Men, telling him that whatever Tom did as a child had been forgotten by God, and he belonged to God now. The Crooked Man was trying to convince Tom that he was bound to make the payment and there was no way out. While Tom struggled with it, Hellboy's patience had run out. He stepped out of the church only to be tacked by pickets. When Tom couldn't be budged, the crooked man resorted to using other crooked tricks. He showered the reverend with riches and made him 20 years younger in a bid to have him give up Tom. However, the old man did not budge. His faith could not be bought with riches or youth. With nothing going his way, the crooked man started to resurrect the dead from their graves, and the witches called their sins. Hellboy and Tom go out to fight these undead sinners who had been offered a place to rest in the church ground. The Crooked Man makes a new offer to Tom, making it clear that Hellboy's devilish reputation is well known and that he should not be trusted. Reverend Watts figures out that the Crooked Man's desire for Tom's lucky bone is stronger than his thirst for Tom's soul. This bone packed some demonic punch, and the Crooked Man, being a notorious and evil miser, can't stand the thought of Tom having an even tiny piece of that power, even when it's not in use. Watts takes the bone from Tom, channels the Holy Spirit into it, and pushes the evil out. Then he consecrates a shovel and hands it to Hellboy, who smacks the Crooked Man, causing him to vanish into thin air and the witches to scatter. Morning breaks, and they finally lay Tom's father to rest. Tom and Hellboy then venture into the woods to dispose of the troublesome cat bone. Inside the crooked man's house, they stumble upon a grotesque, tentacled monstrosity, hugging jars of money. This was the crooked man, in his most vile form. Tom tosses the now consecrated bone to the crooked man, who promptly and, along with his gold, disappears. 
Well, these gold coins in the jars were actually souls that the crooked man had collected over time. On their way back to church, Hellboy spots Effie. Without the crooked man in the picture, she's aged dramatically. Tom fixes a bit and bridles onto her, and she transforms into a horse. Hellboy and Tom part ways with her after painting, Beware, I am a witch, on her flank. The Crooked Man in the upcoming live-action film, Hellboy, The Crooked Man. In February 2023, Millennium Media dropped some big news. They revealed that they're gearing up for a fresh live take on Hellboy, titled Hellboy, The Crooked Man. This could be the start of a new series of flicks, and the action kicked off in April 2023, right in the scenic backdrop of Bulgaria. The director's chair is occupied by Brian Taylor, while the script is penned by none other than the original comics creator, Mike Mignola, joined by his frequent collaborator, Christopher Golden. The source material? Yes, you guessed it. It's the 2008 comic miniseries that goes by the same name. And who's in on the action? Well, it's a co-production deal involving Campbell Grobman Films and New Boyana Film Studios, presented by Millennium Media, along with some Dark Horse Entertainment flair. Brian Taylor is pulling out all the stops to reset the Hellboy saga, giving us a younger, more wanderlusty version of the red-hued hero, sprinkled with a folk horror vibe straight out of the comics. And guess what? It's going to be R-rated, diving headfirst into the dark, scary, violent, and adult elements that comics are known for. Fast forward to the following month and we've got our cast. Jack Kessie is taking on the mantle of Hellboy, Jefferson White steps in as Tom Farrell, and Adeline Rudolph gets the nod for Bobby Joe Song. With hopes sky high for Hellboy the Crooked Man, it seems like a rebirth for the character is on the horizon. The production squad is stacked with heavy hitters like Jeffrey Greenstein, Yerov Lerner, Les Weldon, Jonathan Younger, Rob Van Norden from Millennium Media, and Mike Richardson from Dark Horse Entertainment, all on board. Plus, executive producers include Boaz Davidson, Trevor Short, Tanner Mobley, Avi Lerner, Lottie Grobman, and Krista Campbell from Campbell Grobman Films. As for a release date, well, we're still in the dark about that. But hang tight, because with the cast almost locked in and production gearing up, it shouldn't be too long before they spill the beans. One crucial nugget from Millennium's media press release. If Hellboy the Crooked Man hits the bullseye, it's the opening chapter of a new saga. That means more Hellboy films could be in the pipeline, showing us a different side of the hero than we've ever seen. So buckle up, because this might just be the start of a wild Hellboy ride on the big screen. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks, everyone.